In today's video, we are going to talk about how to identify automation opportunities in your business and also if it's worth automating them. We're getting a bunch of clients that worked with developers, they automated processes, but those processes are not supposed to be automated from the first place because there is no return on investment in those cases. So in this video, we are going to talk about if it's worth automating tasks and also how to identify proper tasks that can and need to be automated. This is especially true for this time of, of, of the year that we it looks like we are going into recession and automation can save you tons of money. For the people that don't know me, my name is Leo Reisig and I am the owner of Amazing Business Results. We have offices in Canada and the US and soon we're going to have also offices in Europe. The only thing that we do in our company is business automation and CRM services. That's all we do. We have software architects, we have developers that are specializing in automations. So bottom line, we can take your business requirements and implement them into proper business automations. In the description below, there is a link to our website. I welcome you to contact us and start working with us on your automation needs. The first part is when we're supposed to automate the task and if it's worth automating those tasks. Every time that you will have repeated manual work, those needs to be automated. And I would say if you're investing, you or your team members, investing more than 10 hours a month on a regular basis on a specific manual task, that probably needs to be automated. It will save you lots of money in the long run. If you have an expensive task, such as sending an invoice whenever the job is done or sending an invoice with the correct amount based on the work that was invested, or maybe taking a deposit and without a deposit not starting the work. And there are lots of examples of money-wise tasks. Also, when there is a reputation damage, as an example, when an employee is sending a quote to a client without a management approval, and then whenever the client approves the quote, the management will say, no, 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 we cannot do that because the amounts that you selected are incorrect. And then they need to void the quote, which obviously cause lots of problems with the customer. So if there is a big financial damage or reputational damage related to a task, those also must be automated or be injected into a process. Whenever employees are losing time on tasks, for example, copy paste or any kind of work that employees are spending and those can be automated. Those need to be automated because employees will be probably your most expensive asset in the company. There are lots of times and we see it all the time that companies will have inefficient working habits. For example, whenever leads are coming into the website, an employee will need to remember to go to the website and download the leads, copy paste them into a sheet or maybe a CRM, contacting them and so on. All those can be fully automated because if you think about it, whenever leads are coming in, they need to be contacted almost immediately. And we can automate the entire process that leads that's coming to the website, going to the CRM. The CRM automatically will send a text message or an email that says, hey, it's Leo, I'm working on your lead. I will give you a call back in a few minutes. I'm just on the phone or something like that. So there are lots of ways that we can start a lead process without even starting it. There are lots of times that employees will work in silos, employees will not be connected to other employees and that's always bad because when an employee is working in a silo, he's the only one who knows what's going on and management will have no idea if the employee is actually working or not. And we always like to take those kind of cases 
package them into a process. And from one side, the employee will have a box that he needs to work in, that the management decided that this is the correct box. And from the other side, all this data will be presented to the management over reporting. So the management can see exactly what's going on with the employee and the employee knows that he is being managed. So that's, that's how it should be. And the last one, management is blind. We see it also all the time, even with big companies. For example, let's say a sales manager will have a bunch of salespeople. Every salesperson will do whatever he wants. Processes in those cases can cage the salespeople to work in a single unified way. And also it's very simple to bring new employees when there is a process in place. The first automation that I like to talk about is the manual work. We see it all the time that companies invest lots of time in manual work that can and need to be automated. An employee that you're paying, you know, four, five, six thousand dollars a month needs to be more efficient. So the dollars that you're spending in the employee will go to a good place. Grabbing some kind of a document, copying information, pasting it into a different place, copying information from websites, creating invoices based on data that exists in your CRM or other places needs to be automated. There are two values to automate those processes. One, of course, you for sure you're not wasting money. And the other one, you're reducing errors because humans will have hangover, they're sick, they have problems at home. Machine is just a machine. It's doing its thing again and again in a very consistent way. So manual work need to be automated. Any work that will have a step-by-step -step approach can and need to be automated. Instead of wasting time and teaching your employees how to create this step-by-step, and oversee them that they're actually doing a good job. Those need to be blueprinted and then automated. As an example, whenever a lead comes from the website into the CRM, an employee is supposed to start working with those leads. We would like to take those leads and put them into a blueprint. The blueprint will dictate how many times an employee is supposed to contact the lead before he can declare that this is a lost lead. What type of information will be extracted from the lead on the first meaningful meeting? How the meeting will be conducted? What type of questions the employee will ask? And so on. All that need to be in a process that the management decided that this is what the company requires the employee to do. And all those step-by-step -step approaches need and can be automated. Onboarding new employees is always a painful topic. Sometimes you will onboard an employee and in one or two months he will be gone. And then you wasted lots and lots of time and effort into this employee. In some cases, the employee will last just because you don't want to train again someone new. And the third case, which is the holy grail, you found a great employee and he survived everything. We like to take those and create full process of online learning that an employee will take a course that will, will tell him about our company, our values, who we are, his role, what he's supposed to do. And that's even before he stepped into his position. In his first day, he will get tested and we can see if he actually took the course or if he understood anything from the course and that will be a great filtration system for us. Also, when the employee is onboarded, I would like him to work with processes, which means instead of explaining a 20 pages process, the only thing that he needs to do is clicking on a button. The button will have some brain behind it and the employee will just get an answer. As an example, do you have a driving license? Yes or no? If it's a yes, there will be one process. If it's a no, there will be a different process. And in this case, I'm saving the employee of learning. Why do I need a driving license and what to do in each case? The multiple data points automation is for me a virtual assistant killer, basically. 
We have lots of clients that started with us with a small army of virtual assistants that were helping them copy paste information from different websites into some kind of a document, filter them in the document, send those people some emails. If they respond to the email, start to contact them or book a meeting, we took the entire process and we just automated it. So basically there is one process that extracting information from websites, putting it into the system. The system will do the filtration, will do the first contact with the person. If he responds, the system will ask him to book an appointment with the salesperson. It's all fully automated. So with multiple data points, there are a bunch of automations that we can offer. It's always good to automate those processes. It's saving tons of money. High cost of error is a point that is very, very painful. There will be lots of tasks that you will not run them all the time, maybe once a month, two months, once a year even. But those must be perfect. As an example, sometimes we have clients that are getting paid by affiliates or referrals. Whenever they, are, they need to get paid, the amounts are incorrect and therefore there is a huge financial damage to the company. In some cases, companies do not have proper account receivables. They don't know how much money people owe them because whenever the employees are finishing a job, it's based on their goodwill to click in the system or report to the management they finish the job. And if the management do not know that the job was finished, there is no proper accounting in place and companies losing insane amount of money. So we like to take those critical tasks and we like to automate them or create processes around them that there is, it's not really in the employee's ends to determine if they want to report or not. Also, in some cases, there is a reputation damage. So whenever the employee or someone from the company is running a very critical task, it will need to be verified by management or by two people. So there will not be any reputation damage to the company. Any copy paste job can and need to be automated. Whenever you have, let's say, multiple systems, you will have your Salesforce or any kind of CRM, you will have QuickBooks and you will have your website. It's very common that leads will come to the website and someone, the marketer, will copy paste them into the CRM. And then whenever there is an invoice that needs to be sent to the client, someone else, maybe the bookkeeper, will open a new account in QuickBooks and will create another invoice based on the information that exists in the CRM. And as you can see, there is lots of time that's going by between the lead coming in and all the way that the salesperson is contacting him and you have a very good chance to lose the lead. And from the other side, whenever you copy information from one system to another, let's say the CRM into your QuickBooks or NetSuite, those cases are a waste of time and prone to errors. There are many times the, the bookkeeper or the account manager will copy the incorrect information, will send a wrong invoice to the right customer. It's just horrible. All those can be automated. Memory-based tasks are probably my favorite. Any employee that is acting based on his memory is basically doomed to fail. It's just the question of how many tasks he will have and how long he's supposed to do them. And God forbid, if this employee is gone, now you need to extract whatever this employee has in his brain and put it in someone else's brain, which obviously is always a challenge. When we wake up in the morning, we have about 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day. This is our limit, our capacity as humans. If we need to invest those in remembering things, the brain will float those things that we need to remember again and again hundreds of times every hour, even though we don't know about it, it's being done subconsciously and it will exhaust us. So basically 11 a.m. will be the last hour that you have some capacity in your brain. 
We like to take all the memory based and automate them and put them into the system. A system can do a better job than a human for sure. So we're taking basically everything that the, uh, uh, the employee is supposed to do. We give them a dashboard that they can see in the morning everything that he's supposed to do in a given day. Now, if this employee is no longer with the company, it's as easy as changing the employee A to employee B, and then employee B can start working immediately without extracting the other employee's brain into the new one. In some cases, we are automating or creating processes for businesses that the business owner or the managers are feeling that they're losing control. Crazy things are happening in the company or their departments, and they have no idea how to fix them. And usually those problems are coming from no processes. Whenever there is a process, we are able to extract the information and create proper reports for the management so they can take ownership and fix the business. The hostage situation is a classic case. Usually it starts with companies that are very small, they have few employees, every employee will own his own realm. The company is now growing and now you have those employees that they are basically holding the companies as hostages. They are the only one who knows their thing, the only one who knows how to operate their department or processes, and they will not share it with anyone. When you're coming as the owner and you want to extract the information, they will always resist. But when the company is creating processes and everybody is sharing their processes to automate their departments, usually employees will have no way to resist it and they will cooperate and their brain will be dumped into a process. And therefore, this is saving the day. Complex processes need to be automated, need to be into a blueprint. In my company, as an example, we have two different entities and soon we're going to have three different companies, three different entities in three different countries with different bookkeeping systems, different invoices, different agreements. Each one of them will have different requirements. Just automating this piece will save probably around five hours per deal. Right now in my business, once I finish a sales meeting, it really takes me a click of a button to generate the correct estimate for the same company with the same rules and everything is being done in the background. Okay, so complicated processes that can take five hours, even a day of work, can be as easy as a click of a button and the system in the background is running all the processes for you and do it in the best way that a human can never do. So first of all, thank you very much for watching all the way to this point. In the next few weeks, I'm going to launch about 10 different automation videos with common automations that companies are using. And again, thank you very much. And if you like to work with us or inquire about our services in the description below, there is a link to our website. I welcome you to meet me. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.